Stay tuned for Spirit and Life. Our topic is the cost of following Jesus. I hope you'll join us. Life Christian Television invites you to join us now for Spirit and Life with Pastor Charlie Alvarado. Hello and welcome to Spirit and Life. I'm your host, Charlie Alvarado. I'm the pastor of One for Life Ministries in El Paso, Texas, and I'm happy to be with you today. Let us rejoice, for this is the day the Lord has made. I've got a great topic for you, the cost of following Jesus. So stay tuned, and I've got plenty of scripture to share with you, and I hope to edify you, to help you, to, to just draw closer to God and let Him do and finish the work that He started in you. First, I want to give a big shout out to our church family, One for Life Ministries, for underwriting this program. And I invite you to join us on Sundays at 10 a.m. We're a loving family church and, and we, we just uh, share the love of God. We listen to the word. We try our best to live the word. And we have ministry for children of all ages. We have marriage ministry. We have fellowships for men and women. And we'd just love for you to come and join us. Come and see what God is doing in our midst. If you have any questions, call us at 911. 9 920 Again, our title today or our topic is the cost of following Jesus. Jesus said the path to life is narrow and difficult and few are those who find it. Then he said the path to death is wide and easy. Many are those who find it. So it's easy to not make it to heaven if you don't put any effort into it. First, you've got to believe in Jesus. When you call upon the name of the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you are saved, you're forgiven of your sins, you're born from above. Heaven is now your eternal home. You become a citizen of heaven. But there's a path that you and I have to walk and, and we follow Christ and, and we imitate him along the way. We're going to talk about discipleship. That's what Jesus wants for all of us to become disciples. And I'm going to give you a definition of what, what that exactly means uh, for you and me or what is required for us to truly be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 4, and this is out of the New King James Version, Jesus uh, is, is calling his disciples. In, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 through 22, he says, or it says, Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. They'd already heard about Jesus. John was prophesying about him. And so now the Messiah shows up. Again, they didn't know at the time he was the Messiah, but he was believable. And he said, he saw them and he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. If you think fishing for fish is great, just wait till you start saving souls. Following Christ requires saving souls, helping other people get into the boat. They would catch their fish and bring them in the boat. Now you and I, as fishers of men, must do our very best to help other people come to God. So Jesus said, if you follow me, you're going to help people come to God. You're going to win souls for the kingdom of heaven. So let's look at the example of these two uh, fishermen. They immediately left their nets and followed him. They stopped what they were doing and they followed Christ. They stopped fishing for fish. And in following Jesus, they became fishers of men. In verse 21, it says, Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Praise God. These are great examples of what it truly means to follow Christ, to leave everything behind and start following him. I know this is easier said than done. Jesus said it's, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. 
Now, he wasn't talking about a literal needle that you sew with. He's talking about the, the gate that goes into a city because in those days, big walls surrounded every city. And during the day, the gates were open where caravans could come through with their camels loaded down with all kinds of goods. But at the end of the day, they would close the main gates. And the only way for anyone to get into the city at, at nighttime was through the small doorway, which is only big enough for a man to go through. And they call that opening the eye of the needle. And so Jesus was referring to this. Now, he said it's easier for a camel to, to go in, to, for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, let's imagine if trying to get a, a big camel through a man-sized opening, well, he would have to get on his knees and crawl through that opening. Whatever uh, merchandise he was carrying, all that had to be taken off. He had to be stripped of everything to be able to enter into this small doorway. And so chances are they had to pull on one end and push on the other end. It was not impossible, but it said that's easier for a camel to go through that small opening than for a rich man to go into the kingdom of heaven. Because a rich man is attached to his riches. He does not want to let go of everything uh, to follow God, or it's going to be harder for him to let go of everything in order to go into the kingdom of heaven. And this is what God wants us to do let go of everything. We see two examples here of Peter and, and John there, uh, or Peter and Andrew first dropping their nets and going straight to Jesus. Then we saw James and John doing the same thing, leaving their dad and saying, okay, we're, we're following Jesus. They didn't know what to expect. I mean, Jesus said, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. I'm going to change your life. Your life will be totally different. The value of your life is going to increase and the things you do will be to advance the kingdom of God. In Luke chapter 9, in verses 23 and 24, uh, this is out of the Amplified Bible. He's, it says, he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interests, take up his cross daily, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come. These are brackets that are in the Amplified because they, they put a lot of brackets and thoughts in here to help explain uh, what is being written. It says, and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose it through death. But whoever loses his life in this world for my sake, he is the one who will save it from the consequences of sin and separation from God. A lot of stuff written in these, in these short verses here. There's only two verses, uh, but there's a lot. If you want to follow Jesus, to be a disciple of Jesus, you must deny yourself. What does that mean? That means we must set aside our selfish interests. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added to you. So our faith is in God. We look to God to being our provider, our source for everything we need as long as we're alive in this world. That's the faith that Jesus had and that's the faith that you and I must have. God is our father. He's our provider. He's our protector, our healer, our source, our friend. He's everything. He's our comforter. He's our helper. He's our strength. Whatever we need day by day, that's where our faith needs to be. And that's why he said he must take up his cross daily, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come. We don't know what's going to happen in a day. Only God knows what's going to happen each day. So at the beginning of the day, I advise everybody in my church, I'm constantly, you know, encouraging people to 
make a fresh commitment daily. Yesterday's gone. We can't do anything about it. We rejoice in the victories and we forget the past, good, bad, or the ugly. But this is a new day. The mercies of God are new every morning. There's more than enough mercy for you and me. Why? Because the, His mercies are as high as the heavens are above the earth. And grace, His favor. God knows you and He's already sealed you with His Holy Spirit. He can see the world and pick out who's, who's are His. And you have favor with the Lord. He's going to hear your prayers. He's going to hear your cries. He's going to help you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you, says the Lord. And Jesus said, I will be with you always, even to the very end of the age. So that's the confidence that you and I must have. God is with me. God is for me. God is in me. I will overcome any challenge that, that I may face today, any obstacle, I claim victory in advance because he who is in me is greater than he that is in the world. So you must take up your cross daily. Every day we must, I, I pray for the will of God. I do this for me and my wife. I pray for God's will for myself, for my family, for our families, for our church and their families. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. We want what you want, Father. And this is all about dying to self and living for God. There's no way we can truly and successfully follow Jesus unless we're willing to give up our will in order to do His will. I've concluded uh, for myself that the best thing that could happen to me today is that God simply have His way. I know I'll be victorious no matter what happens in the day because my confidence is in the Lord and I hope you feel the same way. So he says, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come and follow me. What does that mean? Believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. To follow Christ requires discipline. It requires commitment. And sometimes it will require sacrifice. He says, for whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose it. So if you're only living for yourself, if you're only living to preserve you and whatever it is is important to you, you're going to lose that. If that's your priority, you're going to lose it. He says, uh, through death, but whoever loses his life in this world whoever denies himself, whoever puts God first in his life, he said he is the one who will save it from the consequences of sin and separation from God. The world is already condemned. It was condemned in the very beginning when Adam and Eve sinned. And so that's why God already planned to send the Savior even way back then in the garden. So the world is going down. The world will someday be destroyed. Only those who believe in Christ will, will, will be saved from the destruction that is to come, receive eternal life, inherit the kingdom of heaven, inherit the new earth. All that, that God has is ours. He loves us. We're his children and he wants to share everything with us. But we've got to do our part while we're here in this world. And the scriptures teach us that the things that we suffer now are nothing compared to the blessings we will receive in that day. When life ends for us here, it begins there. We will forever be with the Lord and we have each other forever uh, as long as we all believe in Christ. That's why we can't live for ourselves. He says, follow my example. Well, Jesus went everywhere doing good. Jesus did only what the Father told him to do. That's work for us. We're used to doing our thing. And Paul begs us in Romans chapter 12 to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to him. This is our reasonable service or this is how we worship God by giving ourselves to Him. If we're not surrendering our body, surrendering our mind, our heart, and our will to God, then we're not worshiping Him. We're still living for ourselves. God wants all of you. 
He wants spirit, soul, mind, and body. And so we surrender that to God. And we do this by faith. We can't see him. And yeah, we can hear him uh, through that small, still voice within. Or maybe somebody will prophesy to us and speak to us. And we can hear God through one another. But, you know, audibly, you know, if somebody hears an audible voice of God, well, you know, they're very blessed if that happens. But most, most of us, we don't hear him audibly. And for sure, we can't touch him or see him with our eyes. And so we live by faith, not by what we see. And so our faith is that God is with us right now. He is present right here with me. He's present right there with you. He loves you. He loves me. He's for me. He's for you. He wants nothing but the best for you and me today and every day. So, you know, if we're only living for ourselves, whatever you're living for, you're going to lose that. But if you're living for God, you're going to save everything. You're going to you're going to have God forever. And the way you're living by following Christ is storing up treasures in heaven. You being a blessing to others is what God wants for you. We can't be a disciple of Christ and not care about our fellow man. Jesus cares. He takes it personally how we deal with other people. For that's when in, in Matthew 25, he separates the sheep and the goats. The sheep are the ones who, who fed the hungry and, and gave, thir gave drink to the thirsty, clothed the naked, visited those in prison. He said, and they said, how did we do this? Or when did we do this? He said, as much as you've done it unto these, the least of my brethren, you've done it unto me. So when you are being a blessing to somebody, big or small, whenever you care about others and reach out to others, tell others about the Lord. You are storing up treasure in heaven. The Lord is delighted with you. And, and, and this is what God wants to see in all of his children. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Uh, my father is the vine dresser. Every branch that doesn't produce fruit, he cuts off. And even the branches that do produce fruit, he prunes them so that they can produce more fruit. He said, without me, you can do nothing. By this, my father is glorified if you bear much fruit. God wants you and me to be very fruitful every day. Be a blessing to others. Be a blessing to the people you live with. Don't live for yourself. Overcome evil by doing good. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who revile you. We can never and should never stop doing good. We don't withhold the goodness of God. On the contrary, we are distributors of God's love and God's goodness. So, uh, in, you know, I, I asked the question today, what is a disciple? A disciple is, 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 uh, is, comes from the Greek word mathetes, M-A-T-H-E-T-E-S, the long vowel sound on the E's there. So that word is mathetes. And to, to truly be a disciple, one must be a follower of Christ. And okay, this is a disciple of anything or anyone, but today we're talking about Jesus. And I'm always going to talk about Jesus when I talk about disciples. So a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ must be a follower of Christ. He is an imitator of the Lord. He goes where Jesus goes. He goes wherever Jesus guides him. And he imitates the Lord. He does what he does. He talks like he talks. He serves like he served. And he'll pray like he prayed. He trusts God like Jesus trusted God. So we, we look at Jesus and we do our best to become like him. He said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I'm lowly and meek and gentle of heart, and you will find rest for, for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. So the Lord Jesus is telling us, bring all your cares, all your concerns to me. Don't worry about a single thing. Put all your trust in me and watch me. Walk with me. Partner with me. Watch me. Observe me. Imitate me. I'm lowly. I'm meek. I'm gentle of heart. He emphasized these things. So if that's what the Lord wants us to learn and that's how he wants us to live, then we must change our way of living, treat people with kindness, treat people with respect, choose your words carefully, let your words build and not destroy. 
We've got to be used by God to bring, help bring other people to Christ. We don't yank them into the kingdom. We win them by loving them, by being kind. And then they must observe us how we are with each other. Jesus said, by this shall all men know you are my disciples if you love one another. We cannot be disciples of Jesus if we're not expressing love daily, not just when it feels good, even when it doesn't. Love is patient. Love is kind. Amen. So we show love in imitating Christ or we, we imitate Christ by showing love. Another thing that makes up a disciple is that he must be a learner, a student, a pupil, somebody who, who wants to learn the word of God. Jesus used the word of God. He said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And the name of this show is Spirit and Life. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. They give life to everyone. So we receive the life of God when we hear the word and we speak the word. All right. And so we must learn God's word. Uh, the, you know, the sword of the spirit and, and uh, Ephesians chapter six, the sword of the spirit when it comes to the armor of God is the word of God. You know, we can have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteous, the righteousness, the belt of truth, the, our feet shod with the gospel of the preparation of peace, but we're not going to do any damage. All those things will protect us, but we're not going to do any damage to the kingdom of darkness unless we start speaking the word of God. That's the sword of the spirit. And of course, praying. That makes a huge difference. So to truly be a disciple of Jesus, we must learn the word of God. In my early days, you know, just coming to Christ, just learning how to walk with him. I put uh, on three by five index cards, I would write down scriptures as I read the Bible, things that would jump out at me, things that really spoke to me. I would write them down chapter and verse. And, and, you know, every day as I'm walking in and out of the house, I had them all over my house. And so I would just, I would read those and read them and read them and, and learn them. I wanted to get those into my heart. The word of faith that we preach is the word that is near us and that is in our mouths. So we want to get the word uh, out and it's important that it be in us as well. So we must be learners if we truly want to be disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the fourth thing that makes up a disciple is he must be an adherent. To adhere to something means you stick to it. And so uh, an adherent is a devotee. He is one who is committed to Jesus and he is committed to the cause of Christ, which is preaching the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. We've got to be dedicated to these things. The world needs us to, to, to follow Christ. The world needs us to imitate Christ. The world needs us to know the word of God and the world needs us to, to, to stick to what we're saying, not to compromise truth, but to be committed to the word of God, committed to our Lord Jesus Christ, committed to, to be an example, just as he was an example to us or is. He is eternal and he will forever be our leader. And so in Matthew chapter 28, uh, verse 19 through 20, Jesus uh, was just about to ascend into heaven. And, and so uh, he gets his disciples. These are his last words before they saw him go up through the clouds. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. And, and in brackets here, this is the amplified. He says, help the people to learn from me. He says, make disciples, help people to learn of me, believe in me and obey my words. That's what an adherent does. He obeys the word baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. And I'm with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstance, and on every occasion, even to the very end of the age. So this, these are Jesus' last words before he went to heaven. Make disciples, make followers, make imitators, make adherents, make students of me, of my word. Teach them everything I taught you. Be good examples. Follow my examples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it takes a disciple to make disciples, and only a disciple should be baptizing disciples. And the person who baptizes anyone must commit to being a good example to the people he or she baptizes. And I hope that you're holding that person accountable, but uh, watching them and imitating them. You know, Paul said, F follow me or follow me as I 
follow Christ. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. Every leader, every pastor, every church leader should, should make that commitment and, and invite people, watch my example. Follow me, watch me follow Jesus, do the things I do. We are taught through the Word of God to imitate those who through faith and patience have received God's promises. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, uh, he said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You follow Jesus, you walk in light. And we're instructed, walk in the light as he is in the light. So wherever Jesus is, there is light. And wherever you are, there is light if you're following Christ. That's why he said, you're the light of the world. Let your light shine. Do good. Why? He says, let your light shine so that men can see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We don't do good to try to get to heaven. We do good because we're from heaven. That's the example. That's what's required of you and me if you truly want to be a disciple. And I hope that you become disciples. If you haven't committed already, make that commitment today to follow Jesus Christ. Just plan on being a blessing everywhere you go, whatever you do. Luke chapter 9, verse 57 through 62. Uh, here, this is out of the New Living Translation. He says, as they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, foxes have dens to live in, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to even lay his head. So here Jesus is making it very clear. I've left everything. I left heaven. I don't even have a home. Jesus was literally homeless. He didn't have his own house. All right. So he says, foxes have houses. Birds have houses. I don't have a house. Uh, so, you know, make sure you really want to follow me. Are you willing to let everything go? He said to another person, come follow me. The man agreed, but said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Another said, yes, Lord, I will follow you. But first, let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Family, God wants everything. When Jesus died, he paid the price not only for your sins, but he bought you. You belong to God. You are His. He is yours. Uh, I'm, I'm going to jump down uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. I'm running out of time. He says, do, uh, Paul writes, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Verse 20, You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. God wants everything. Give him your body, child of God. Have faith that God is with you. You know he loves you. He's going to lead you in the path of righteousness every single day, all day. What must we, we do? We must believe. We must have confidence that God is with us, that he's leading us, he's guiding us. And if you're going through any kind of trial, have faith that you not only will overcome, but just declare that you have overcome. Claim your victory in the mighty name of Jesus. We don't surrender to this world. We don't surrender to anyone but God. Let him have his way. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and let his peace guard your heart and mind. I'm so happy to be with you today. I hope that this message blessed you. If you have any questions, call us at 915-920-8301. Thank you and God bless you. See you next time.